It was kind of nice. Lego decided to put out some more X-Men sets themed around X-Men 97. Plus, you know, they have put out some other stuff in the past. In the new sets, you didn't really get a villain since the Magneto version ends up being one of the more hero actual X-Men member suits. And just the Wolverine class set there isn't going to be super exciting. You're not going to put this in display with your minifigures at all. And in my past videos, I've talked about their old Sentinel design, which was something I wasn't super happy with and was one of my first Lego X-Men builds and mocks where I built my own Sentinel design, which was a lot bigger, scaled a little bit better with the minifigures, plus had some more articulation and detailing, obviously. But not going to be talking about that today, but another villain character mock that I threw together, which is a character that I teased a month or two ago on my community posts and is somebody that did appear in the new season of X-Men 97. And of course, that's going to be this build of Mojo. Finally got all the pieces together for this, got the instructions done, and I'm very excited to show this off. You can see I displayed it with some of the Citizen Brick supercomputer parts. Those are going to be perfect for any mocks I decide to throw the character in. But let's get a closer look in a 360 view. Like most of my mocks, Mojo here was designed in Bricklink Studio to begin with. And when I'm doing that, I'm going through and trying to make as many of the pieces available through Pick a Brick as possible to make it as easy for anybody to get everything to build it and keep it affordable so you don't have to track down a bunch of old parts. Obviously, not everything is going to be available all the time, and that's going to be the case here for some parts. And if you want to get these instructions, they'll be in the description. This ended up being sort of a happy accident where I ended up designing this since I hadn't seen the new season of the show yet. He didn't end up having a new episode. But really, I was just looking for fun things to build in the X-Men universe, and I thought Mojo would be pretty easy to translate into Lego, like you can see here. I feel like I did a pretty good job of translating some of the features and curves, all using official Lego pieces. Like the tail on the back, use some great pieces to add some texture there. And that also ends up all being ball joints or mixel joints, where it is slightly adjustable, and I'll show that off. Did originally design it though with the ratchet sort of plate pieces, so switching out for the ball joints was probably a better choice in the long run. I think the ratchet joints filled in the spaces a little bit more on the outsides of the tail part, but obviously that could be a personal preference thing where you could switch those back and forth if you wanted to. And I think one of the biggest challenges for me was designing the face with official Lego parts. Since he has a pretty detailed look there, it's going to be pretty hard to hit it right on the head as being perfect. I did do a pretty good job, I feel like, with what I could in the small space since I only had the 2x2 two two plate area there, basically, where I used the studs with the circles on the inside to kind of simulate the pupils or just the bloodshot. I look around his normal eyes and just using the sort of pie slice tiles there to give him a smile. I think that worked pretty well. I used some of those Han Solo and Carbonite tiles. Actually, these might be from Rock Raiders originally, whatever that use was for the first time, but that gives sort of the wire look going down and around his head. And something that also worked out pretty well is that there is a decent amount of articulation for the head where it does rotate and it is just held on by a jumper plate. So I think that worked out pretty well and gave the general shape that I wanted for the head. Arms are also going to be pretty articulated where I used clips. I'm just going to say, like you're seeing now, this is a mock. It's not going to be up to Lego standards. Some things might pop off here and there, but you might need to pose it around a little bit to get it sturdy. But like I said, clip and bar pieces there to articulate up in the shoulders. Plus you can rotate it on the elbow side of the arms too. I used one of those hinge pieces, so you can also bend at the arm. One of the lucky pieces that came in yellow that was very helpful was the battle droid body actually, which I was able to use for a hand. Same with the robot claw pieces. So you have articulated fingers and hands, which again, you can hinge a bit and then also rotate to get a lot of expression and posability in this build. This version of the character is a little bit more based on the Hasbro action figure that recently came out. So it has six legs. You could take off one on each side to give him four, kind of like in the cartoon. And the arms here, you can see on the front, I did throw on the little robot ones. It's hard to get them a bit smaller and still have some posability to it, but there's some room for rotation, hinging it, and more rotation if you wanted to move those around a little bit. 
Not sure how much you would actually want to use those in a display. Looking at the big feature again, the tail part, it's going to have a lot of range of motion. You are going to kind of have to go through and make some micro adjustments if you want to post that around a little bit though, since there are so many joints on it, but you can move it side to side, adjust the angle a bit since you can make it up and down a little bit more, make it more vertical, but lots of options there. And I don't know about these legs. So when I originally built this, wanted to use these bigger claw pieces, which I did end up getting to show off. But honestly, I don't know if these are the best options to hold up the weight. You know, there's space you could throw on a two by two round plate on the bottom to help with the weight distribution a bit. But I also noticed if you use these smaller teeth pieces, those work pretty well too. And I think these provide a pretty decent look as well. It makes the legs a little bit stumpier probably, but that kind of works for the cartoon version of the character. And just the angle that these can lay down just makes it easier to put the weight underneath the main body versus having the legs sort of spread out and just creates more gravity where the legs will actually bend. But just want to show that off too. I think I might even prefer this look but I just want to show off. There's a couple options with what you can do with it, and I'll just take off two of the legs too. And like I pointed out, it stands perfectly fine on four legs as well. So if you want to have it based on whatever your preferred source reference is, go for it. A couple different options. That's why Lego is great. Take things off, add things on if you want to. You have a lot of different options. And just showing this off next to a minifigure. Here is Rogue. So. It's going to be a little bit bigger. You know, this is one of those characters that kind of shifts in size a little bit, kind of like Sentinels, where he'll be bigger, he'll be a bit smaller. I think this is a pretty good middle ground size for different reference images that I looked at. But I'm happy with the scaling, I'm happy with the level of articulation I was able to put on. And at the moment, there's not a whole lot I personally would have changed on it that I can think of. One thing I am going to be looking into is finding another option for the head that will be either a sticker or printed in some way. And I did come up with an alternative design for the head, which not a super big change. It'll have the same articulation scheme and all that, but it'd be great if I could get an actual face on there of the character, make him a little bit more recognizable and specific to the design. And it's kind of nice, it still has the rotation. So it wouldn't be a downgrade in any way to have the printed version. And there is that brick built version if that doesn't end up actually getting made. And of course, here are my two X Men mocks next to each other. Obviously, the Sentinels can be a lot taller, but very fun to see both of these together. I think I mentioned it in one of my other reviews or videos that I'm in kind of my villain arc right now. I want to collect some Brotherhood members or just have more villains like Mojo where I can just fill in a scene of some sort, whether it's going to be in a mock or throw it in the danger room in some way just because. It's not fun if you just have all the heroes, you gotta fill in both sides of the teams, like the Sentinel and all my other builds that I end up designing usually. The instructions for Mojo will be on my Rubricable page in the description below. For the first week, it will be free. Then I'm gonna raise the price to probably a dollar like all my other premium sort of builds. So if you wanna get this, jump on it right away. Otherwise, it's gonna be available for a pretty affordable price. Pretty much all of the parts for this are available from Lego on pick a brick, so you can pick up most of this brand new for a pretty affordable price. There's a couple pieces here and there, like I think the yellow teeth pieces that I use for the thumbs, and some other smaller pieces just aren't available on pick a brick right now. They might be, but everything on here is a pretty modern part and should be pretty easy to pick up if you have to go to Bricklink as well. If you want to see more Lego X Men videos or custom Lego Marvel superhero videos overall. Check out all the videos on my channel. I've been Brick Radiop, and I'll see you in the next video.